All right. Are we ready to rock? Move in here. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hermitcraft panel. Growing. <laughs> How you guys doing? Yeah. So we're going to try and do a panel here focusing on growing and maintaining a server community, how to get it started. Um, but obviously, we're going to have questions uh, just regarding Hermitcraft in general. Uh, so any and all questions. Uh, eventually, we're going to start off with uh, some Reddit questions, basically, that we gathered that we thought were good, kind of just riff on those for a little bit. And then as the panel goes, we're going to open it up to questions from the audience and stuff like that. Uh, so first things first, I guess, is introductions. So starting out at the end there. Hello, Minecon. <laughs> so my name is Cubfan135. I have been part of the Hermitcraft server for about seven months now. Uh, some of you guys might have seen a few of my videos uh, from before I joined Hermitcraft called Things You Might Not Know About Minecraft. Uh, some facts and obscure things about Minecraft. Um, and I will hand it now over to Iskol85. Hi everybody, this is crazy, thanks for showing up. Uh, I'm Iskal and I really hate diorite and that's my thing. That's, that's what I do, I burn diorite and hope that it's removed from the game in 1.11. We'll see tomorrow, we'll see. Hello everyone, my name is Mumbo and... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna warn you, I do have a bit of a sore throat at this point in time, so I may not sound like my usual smooth self, but <laughs> I make Hermitcraft episodes, as you know, as you can probably tell, and I also make redstone tutorials, and I basically focus on creating huge quantities of lag on the server. That seems yes. to be my thing, so... <laughs> hey, guys. So thank you all for showing up. This is awesome. Uh, my name is Tango Tech, or just Tango. Uh, I have been on the server for a little over two years now, I think, loving every minute of it. I uh, do a mixture of redstone and building, and uh, yeah, design an iron farm once in a while, you know? <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. I am Impulse SV. I've uh, been a hermit for about a year and a half now. Focusing on automation is my thing, another technical, technical Minecrafter. And again, thank you guys for coming. I did not expect this turnout. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello there, my metal finders and crafters. It's some good times with Scar here. Um, <laughs> I've been lucky enough and honored to be on the Hermitcraft server for seven months now. Um, people might know that I like to build trees. Um, I leave cats all over the server, driving people crazy, especially Iskol down there. Anti-cat person. But we love you. All the cats do. Um, but like I said, thank you so much for coming out. All right, so uh, we also have three other hermits. We had to limit this to six here. Uh, we had to limit this to six of us, but we have Hypno, Python, and Joe Hills over in the audience. So give them a hand. And that is not it. That is not it. We actually have a little surprise. There's one more guy who wanted to be with us, but couldn't really make it. So we kind of wanted to do the next best thing. So. We figured this guy. <laughs> well, that's, that's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> that guy is going to join us if that's okay with you guys. So hold on a second. Can you guys hear me? X, you, you happy to be here? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Thanks for always speaking to hear me. <laughs> oh, we hear him, don't we? Wow. They Amazing. hear you just fine. Oh, <laughs> it, is, it is wonderful to be here in Proxy. I am a sumo or a sumo void. I love to build, I love to do redstone, and I love my friends here in Hermitcraft. I wish I was there. <laughs> we wish you were here too. All right, so like I said, we're going to basically just do some questions we got from Reddit, uh, run down the line, answer them the best we can, uh, and then later on we'll open up the live questions. We'll call you guys up or something like that. We'll figure it out as we go. So we're going to start with right. Cup. All right, so we got a question on Reddit uh, from Legions of Laguya. He asks, what is some advice you would give to someone entering into the YouTube Minecraft communities as a content creator? So the biggest thing for if you're trying to start your own YouTube channel or your own SMP server, the, the biggest thing would be to be start off with people of your own size. Um, so for instance, uh, a lot of us on, on Hermitcraft have similar sized channels. We all sort of do the same types of things, redstone, building, uh, we all excel at those. And getting together with your friends can also be a good way to start off in SMP for a, a server community. 
Good answer. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'm going to read a question from Magpie, who asked a thing that we get asked a lot, and I, I, I think a few of you may want to know this as well. Um, she asks, what is the advantages of playing on a server versus on a single player world? Um, first of all, you know, you get to uh, burn diorite that other people have mined, which is <laughs> extremely important to maintain a server, keep it clean. Um, but also you get, to, you get to meet a lot of friends, obviously, and, and I don't know about you guys, but personally playing, playing mul multiplayer Minecraft is it's an experience that you don't get when you play by yourself. Um, so, yeah, there are loads of things. Shops, you get economy in the game, you get uh, the banter between two players when you're on and you're, you're helping each other out. There can be mini games being created that you can't do in single player um, and stuff like that. So, definitely a, a huge thing to play on a, on a server as opposed to a single player. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I feel exactly the same way. One of my favorite things about playing on a multiplayer server is the fact that I get to look at everyone else's builds and basically think, hey, they're building much better things than I am. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should take some tips from them. And then they come on and they help me out and they show me the ropes and basically show me how to do, be better at Minecraft, which is very handy indeed. Yeah, I would say the best thing about multiplayer for me is finding that core group of people that you really enjoy playing with, doing collabs with them, and just being able to do something together that was better than what you could have done individually is the best thing ever. Like, Cub and I just did something the other, a couple weeks ago or whatever, where we built this giant globe in the sky that, for a tree world thing, and it, we had no idea what we were doing, but it turned out fantastic, and it was just such a fun event to do that together on the spot, so it's cool. Yeah, one thing being a technical Minecraft player is I never really learned how to build things that looked pretty. Uh, so then when I got on the server and Scar came on, <laughs> and I see the stuff he builds, it, it just inspires me to try to step up my game, if you will, and, and learn how to build beautiful things like he just does naturally. And so that's what I like about it too, being able to just get inspired by the other members. And uh, you know, we all just kind of make each other laugh when we're together and, and that kind of thing, and it, it makes Minecraft fun. I'll echo that, and I don't know redstone. I barely know game mechanics. I know how to make trees, but all of these guys and their just incredible skill at this game, and just you know everybody learning from each other, um, especially when it comes to redstone. I'm like maybe that much better, a little bit. I'm trying. I'm really trying. But uh, that's what makes it special: is everybody kind of contributing to make a better uh, place for everybody on the server. Yeah, le learning from other people is one of the uh, best things about being on Hermitcraft, for sure. For example, my buddy Iskow recently helping me out with some, some building here and there. Around my base, doing some paths, learning some different things. So, yeah, being able to play on a server and learn from other people is uh, a really great experience. Is someone bobbing my head? <laughs> that looks amazing. This is, this is, is how we know Exuma, by the way. It's a voice in our head. We, no one knows where he is. He's like to the right, to the left. Your imagination is going. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, Exuma, like, you should have seen our faces when you started talking. Instant, we all suddenly <laughs> forgot that you, you could speak. And then we were like, who on earth is speaking? There's, there. Confusion. I, have, I have a theory Confusion that AI, Exuma is actually an AI that Tango has coded into the Hermitcraft <laughs> server. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I got, a, I got another question here for all the hermits here. What was your first hermit experience on the server? I can tell you mine, it was a night of terror, absolute sheer terror in the Mesa biome. That first night when we got onto the server and we were fighting skeletons, we were fighting, you know, zombies and creepers. I must have died six, seven, eight times, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, that, that's what SMP is all about, getting on and having fun with friends. <laughs> Me next. First, first <laughs> night on the Hermitcraft server. Um, yeah, we took a good swim. We, we were swimming for like, you know, when you record, when you record a YouTube video, it's it's uh, you, you try and make it fun. And the first thing that happens in my first episode is like, let's swim for 25 minutes. <laughs> no one even made a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, this, this, I don't know. I don't know about this, so that, that's my first experience. But it turned out good, you know, we eventually got ashore and then got killed and had to swim again. So uh, there's a few cuts there, but uh, uh, it was fun. 
All right, so my first Minecraft, well, Hermitcraft experience was obviously three years ago now, which is very, very strange, because I think of myself as the new Hermit still, amazingly enough. <laughs> yeah, I know, one of the veterans, it's ridiculous. Um, but one of my first experiences was, I sort of took it upon myself to build the spawn hub, like, of the town center that we were building. So we all hopped on, and I was like, yeah, I'll build the plaza in the middle. Now, I'm not particularly confident with my builds, and this was the start of Hermitcraft, so I really wasn't particularly good at building. And I started placing the blocks, and then I just thought to myself, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so that, that was basically it. But I managed to muddle through, and nobody told me it was awful, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it was a success. <laughs> So my first experience on Hermitcraft, I wasn't technically even a member of the server yet. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you remember Mumbo. Yeah, Mumbo was building my one of my iron farms, and he did what he does best. <laughs> and he contacted me, and they whitelisted me for a day so I can kind of come in and save the day. But it was truly an awesome experience. So that was really cool. So my first moment on the Hermitcraft server, I came on as the uh, fourth technical guy. Uh, on the server, and it was last season. We had a seed that so had it four witch huts in, in the general same vicinity. So we could actually make an area where you could activate four witch farms at the same time. So we decided to take all four of us. It was actually me, Azuma, Tango, and Mumbo, and we each went off and built a witch farm. So before I ever had my first pickaxe in the game, they had me building a witch farm. <laughs> so they put me to work right away. It was just like, hey, welcome to the server. Get to work. Go build us a witch farm. So right off and running. I'm trying to think of my first experience. I think it was Rendog and I. Shout out to Rendog. Um, our kind of fight to keep from being the number one death leader, I think. Um, there was a lot of uh, Knights of Terror that never showed up in my videos of skeletons. And finally, I think somebody told me to finally just make a shield. Um, after 1.9, the skeletons aren't your friends. Um, and then I think my happiest moment is just trying to make that mesa just a little more beautiful on the top, trying to add some trees, some extra details to it. Um, and that's what my goal is start with, starting out as my first experience. I cannot even remember what the first night was like on Hermitcraft because it was, what, four years ago? But I got a secret for all of you. So can everyone here keep a secret? Because we are technically not on the fourth world of Hermitcraft. We are technically on the fifth. We had uh, a world that got corrupted after everyone put up their first episode, and I can't remember <laughs> anything about that world. So, yeah, I can't remember my first night on Hermitcraft. There you go. <laughs> All right, so the next question is to all of the hermits, but I think it specifically applies to me quite nicely because do you ever regret the choice of skin or logo you choose since they often stick with you for a really, really long time? Now, okay, I don't know how many of you have seen my Minecraft skin, okay? I don't know how many of you have seen my vlogs or seen the comments in my vlogs, but a lot of people point out the fact that I am in fact missing my mustache and that I don't look at all like my Minecraft skin, which <laughs> it is something that I sort of regret, but then again, you know, I quite like the mustachio guy and I quite like my little logo, so I guess that's, that's what I'm sticking with for now. Should, should you grow a mustache, Mumbo? What do you guys think? Should Mumbo grow a mustache? <laughs> See now, Cub, that would be great, okay, that would be great. Can you? <laughs> That's what I was just about to get onto, is Cal. Uh, I'm not particularly brilliant at the, the moustache growing thing. This is like seven days stubble right now, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's not looking so great. <laughs> I, uh, with, this, with the skin thing, I think it's an interesting question just to, uh, I mean, you can't really choose how you're, how you're born, you, you know. You, you, you just gotta own it. And, and I'm happy with how I came out from my Minecraft mama. So, you know, I'm, I'll be happy with it. I got my eye and, and that's cool. So, Cobb, you're kind of bald in your skin. No, not in... Not in real life. Not in real life. Uh, I tried to hey, hey, get a little bit of a buzz cut to sort of simulate the baldness, but uh, I also don't have a huge beard. I, I had people thinking I was a 70-year-old man with a giant, you know, old man beard, but... Uh, no, no. But no, no regrets. No regrets with my, my username or anything like that. I love my skin, uh, but one of the common questions I get is, are they surprised that I don't have glowing red eyes? So no, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, the skin that I picked, I've never really had a problem with it. it, it it's, I thought it suited me. You know, I it just kept it plain and simple, and that's kind of my style, is to simplify everything. That's what I try to do in the game. 
is uh, you know make the game easier for me, and and so you know I've always been happy with uh, with mine anyway. Yeah, I think I've been happy with mine. People have been asking me since being at Minecon what my character actually looks at to the side. If you're unfamiliar with my character, he kind of has this awkward look to the side. Um, so I don't exactly know what that what I'm looking at, but uh, my character is kind of a slash between Indiana Jones and a cowboy kind of. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I've uh, chosen. And that is important when you're starting out to pick something that that's that's you, and that's something that you're going to use, and that's what people are going to recognize you as. I absolutely love my skin. It was made by a buddy called Ravenschild. I have no idea if he'd be watching this, but when he made this skin, uh, he really did a fantastic job. For those of you who don't know, I am the Doom guy from Doom. That's what my skin is based on. I see you holding up my little avatar guy there. Yeah, I, I love the skin. Um, I forgot what the original question was, but I like it. It doesn't look like me in real life. No one knows what that looks like. Not even my own mother. <laughs> All right, so next question is from Mrs. Zuos. Uh, do you guys have meetings often, and how do they work, and are there like 25 people in a voice call, and all that stuff? So we get, that, we get asked that a lot, and yes, we do have a TeamSpeak meeting, generally once a month or so, uh, where we go over any plans, the, the future direction of the server, any big upcoming events that we need to coordinate, things like that. But yeah, it's pretty much just, you know, X usually runs it and has the agenda, because he's the one that's organized. Uh, and thank you, X, for doing that. Um, no but, problem, buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's generally 15 people in Skype, and we just kind of take turns addressing issues if we're, you know, new events we're going to do, like I said, or if we're entertaining new people to be joined on, we, that's where we discuss it, that sort of thing. Ten, ten minutes of every uh, meeting goes to uh, figuring out why Rendog's microphone is like... <laughs> So weird on TeamSpeak, and uh, another 10 minutes are spent between me and Exumavoid, where Exumavoid's tried to tell me that it's called schedule and not schedule, which is obviously wrong. Obviously. And uh, by that time, T Tango is usually like, all right, well, you know, I gotta go uh, farm some iron. So uh, yeah. we just, we're done. <laughs> some, some of the meetings are really unnecessary, X, I just wanna say, once you're up there somewhere. <laughs> Also, usually at the end of meetings, we have uh, smaller groups that sometimes break off. For instance, the, uh, the log fellas and the birch fellas sometimes broke off and did their own thing, sort of plotting against one another. So, yeah, we have our own little separate groups sometimes, and uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun, but uh, we, we do get some work done in those meetings as well. Yeah, I think one of the best things we did uh, was before we started this newest season was we really had a big conversation about what we were going to do different this season and, and not just start a new server and do the same thing over and over again. And uh, this guy right here, this brilliant guy, he came up with the idea to do the districts and have you know, something different in each district because we lived in the mesas and, and they had different areas that he actually spent some time mapping out and we all looked at and we said, okay, what can we do with these districts? And, and we came up with things like the shopping district and the residents and, and entertainment district and things like that. And, and we're able to leverage that to make this season feel just a little bit different than last season. And I think that's, you know, that's really made it fun for me and, and kind of re-inspired me to be active on the server and get involved and, and, and collaborate with others and things like that. So planning is, is really important when you're starting a server. And then along the way, of course, meeting with each other to make sure we're all still on the same page, right? That we're still uh, having the same goals in mind and, and we're communicating with each other. So communication's key. And those meetings definitely help us uh, bond as well. Yeah, my goal with, uh, with planning at the beginning of the season with those districts and everything was I wanted the, that season to be a little bit more organized, and the goal is to have just a booming city when we were done. I mean, not skyscrapers and stuff, but although Cleo has taken care of that. Uh, <laughs> but just to have us all have an organized plan, but still have the freedom to do what we want. And so far, it is perfectly on path, and we have much more to go, so still good. Yeah, and besides just business meeting, you know, meetings for, you know, taking care of new members or anything along that lines, just have a time when you all get together and play. Just no recording, just you guys bonding, you know, just playing, playing some things. I think that's really important besides just, you know, a meeting where we're deciding this, that, and the other thing. Um, that's important, but just every once in a while, just getting all together and just having fun on the server, remembering kind of what it's all about. Minecraft, just building, and friendship. I'd, uh, I'd like to just say for anyone who's uh, out there in a community, maybe in a leadership role, that uh, as Impulse said, communication is key. But if you're, if you're someone who organizes a lot in the group, don't be afraid to talk to people. Everyone here gets harassed by me. You know, there's a meeting in an hour, there's a meeting in 30 minutes, the meeting's now, get here. And then, of course, I'll send them, you know, 
uh, notes after the meeting as well about everything that's been discussed. So, you know, and I think that goes a long way for the group. It helps everyone keep on the same page and, and know what's going on. So that's my tip for anyone out there if you're, you know, in, in a group. Just, just communicate. Send people lots of messages. Spam them. <laughs> Yeah, and that actually kind of leads into the question that I have in is says, uh, how hard is it having hermits across the globe? Do you wind up uh, spending more time alone on the server because of that? Um, you know, we have a very diverse group. Everybody's living in, in different countries, and, and so we have a lot of time zones to communicate over. And we have found some, you know, we just kind of pick the times that work for everybody. Some people uh, will, you know, meet at hours that, that aren't the best, but you, you, you make sacrifices for each other. Right in that case, uh, and so they ask, you know, is it is it? Do you find yourself playing on a server alone? For the most part, there's enough of us that are active on the server that it's it's. I've, I'm hardly ever on alone, which is nice. I mean, there's certain hours of the day where just it's at a couple time zones where everybody's sleeping or working or what have you. But uh, for the most part, you know, like for me, I have a, a full-time job, so I, I typically play at night. Uh, you know, after the wife and kids go to bed, type thing, and uh, you know, even at night. This guy will be on, you know, Cub fan down there will be on. We still have people on playing all night long. And if we play long enough, Azuma wakes up bright and early in the morning and he'll be on over in the UK. So I'm Tango's uh, alarm clock to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, that is it's, it's, to bed. it's getting too late, guys. Go to bed. But I mean, have you guys seen any challenges with uh, having people on the server across time zones, anything like that? I, I gotta say, for the longest time, Impulse, I thought you were very rude because I logged on and you know, Impulse was always on, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's active." I said hi and nothing. <laughs> uh, and so after about a month of that, where he still hadn't replied, I was like, "What is wrong with me? You know, why does, did I did I come onto Hermitcraft and take uh, did I take the eye because I have the eye in my name?" And so I searched him up on the server and I found out that you're just AFK and you're super <laughs> chunk. So. But Impulse is always on, so that's that's good company. Yeah. The, the time zones are definitely an issue, though. I mean, most of what Impulse said, I definitely agree with, but it really, it, it's frustrating because, you know, I never get to play with this guy, ever. You know, I rarely get to play with Azuma and stuff because we have limited times to record. So, you know, when a big event is going to come up, we will try to coordinate many months in advance for our specific day, but it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, I'm the same way. I uh, sometimes get on and stay on for quite a long time. So I sometimes am just, you know, finishing up my episode when Mumbo or Iskal hop on from the other side of the world. So we sometimes get together and coordinate and collaborate on different projects when it's, you know, 3, 4, 5 a.m. for me. And, and Iskal has just woken up. So we make it work. All right, we have another question, and this is from Reddit, and this is from Jack3833, and uh, he says, might be a little too early, but have you guys considered um, what you're gonna do for season five in terms of theme or a starting location? Um, might be a little too early for that, but it's a good question, especially when you're starting on a server and you're thinking about, in a builder sense, maybe a kind of an underlying theme. We do have that a little bit in Hermitcraft, and it's not something everybody's mandated, but it's something that, we can kind of go with, and that's kind of the Wild West theme that a lot of us have done. And I think when you're starting out to kind of have that idea of maybe, like he had mentioned in his Reddit comment, what about islands? Like, that sounds amazing. Like, everybody would have an island, and your bases would be made up of ships. Does that sound cool? Like, that, that sounds amazing. So when setting up your server, just think about little details like that. Maybe you're going to make a, a mountain kingdom. So all your bases, your shops, your municipal districts and things like that will be up in the mountains like Skyrim or like what we did as a Wild West theme as, uh, you know, the Mesa. But uh, I think that's really cool, especially for builders to think about that kind of underlying theme of the season that can really help. And I think uh, for, for anyone starting a server, like, take your time. Take your time and, and, and work out. Why, why are people waving? Did I? <laughs> oh, they're on the screen. Hi, everybody. Hi. You doing good? Yeah. I got worried there. I thought I got like a million questions at once. But when you start your server, take your time. Because I'm, I'm very good at rushing into everything and then I get nothing done. But take your time. I think uh, Exuma will be proud of me for saying this. X. I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Azuma, you're up. What question you got? 
I was actually just going to say I had an idea, but I don't think it's a great idea. I don't know. I was thinking about it the other day, season five. Who knows when it's going to be? I'm enjoying season four at the moment. Uh, but imagine if we all went underground, and the rule was we're not going to go back up to the surface. Day one, you take the things that you need, you know, grab a cow, grab some wheat, and then we build underground. We started like one month, everyone's got to stay underground to build an underground city community together. I think that could be pretty fascinating, but uh, <laughs> if that is a Ethan good idea, we just ruined it. We can't do it now. Someone else will do it. <laughs> As someone who pretty much builds every one of their bases underground, and that sounds good to me, yeah. <laughs> No roofs. I mean, come on now. That's brilliant. That would, that would be awesome, Max. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Uh, I have, now, now I'm going to ask the question that's on everybody's mind, pretty much. Um, this was from a, a Reddit user called Chipster70. Why is Mumbo such a spoon, and is 99 enough for the spoon counter? <laughs> um. <laughs> It only, it only has two digits. Come on now. Is it <laughs> yeah, enough? It's two, already at 14. Two digits is definitely not enough for the spoon counter. So one thing that I was saying to the other hermits is that I think at the beginning of Hermitcraft Season 5, not that we're doing any, we're still all loving Hermitcraft Season 4, but I think in the next season, uh, what I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to build a spoon counter right at the very start, and I'm going to put seven digits on it just to, <laughs> just to be absolutely obscene, uh, just to make sure that I have enough for a million spoon, <laughs> spoon moments. But to answer the first part, yeah, I, I don't really know. I think it's just, it's me. I, I seem to just be a bit of a spoon in general. So. And thank you ever so much, by the way, to everyone who has come up to me this weekend so far and given me spoons. I now have enough. How many spoons like, you got in yeah, your pocket? I, I how, how many so you got many. in your pocket right now? <laughs> Let's see. Anybody want to know how many spoons he has in his pocket right now? I got, I got Any one. guesses? Leave a comment in the video. Guess how many spoons he has. <laughs> nine. I heard nine. I also have a giant spoon that's about this big, <laughs> which is just obscene. So thank you ever so much for all your spoons. It's, it's much appreciated. <laughs> all right, this is a question for all the hermits uh, from an, another Reddit user. Mrs. Zoos, and she asks, do you prefer to live close by each other in season four or do you prefer to live far away from each other? Personally, I like living close because I get to collaborate with people like Scar and Tango on builds nearby, builds that you guys actually see in the videos. Uh, so for instance, Scar and I recently collaborated on the, uh, the dam and the, and the Hermitcraft Reservoir. So I really like the, the close quarters for the, all the collaborations that can, that can occur. Yeah, definitely living close, except, you know, next time I won't live close to Mumbo because I can't move around in my yep. base. It's like, it's so laggy. <laughs> and that, that RV, like someone said earlier, I think it was Impulse saying, you know, you gotta, you up your game in building skills when you play next. What is that RV still doing there? I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, the RV is beautiful, all right? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Got some good grass around it. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. The, the RV needs to go. It's messing up my front lawn. <laughs> Come on now, guys. Who thinks I should keep the RV? Please be supportive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Who I'm thinks the RV should go? <laughs> I'm going to build it out of diorite just to really... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move. <laughs> I'll, be in, I'll be in X's base. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> But no, to answer the question, uh, I quite like living near to people, which may sound strange because I'm one of the hermits that is basically built outside of the maze of biomes. But uh, the thing is, is that my previous base was built in a swamp, okay? And that had like the really ugly grass colors. So my issue was is that I, I really wanted to do things with grass this season. I wanted to create cool looking areas and stuff like that. That was my original plan. Then I built the industrial district and basically messed up the entire area. But originally that was the plan. And I didn't want to be playing with the ugly like grass colors or anything like that. So I decided to go on the outskirts of the maze of biome, essentially. That was my plan. But as far as building next to people, it's always great to build near and around people's bases because it's cool being able to see what they're doing as well as what you're doing. So you can show progress in your base. And then even though you don't directly mention things that are happening in their base, people will notice in the video, it's like, hey, this person's built something new on top of it. Maybe I'll go and check it out. And it just shows that the, the server is alive and there's things going on outside of your own builds, which is, is something that I, I think is quite nice. Yeah, I mean, most of my thoughts have been said, but I would just say, um, you, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to see what other people are building. It makes it feel like a, a multiplayer server. So many times when a multiplayer server launches, 
everyone just scatters and they run out 3,000 blocks and build their own base and it turns into like a single player world and that's exactly what we don't want. So I think we've accomplished that. Yeah, nothing puts a smile on my face more than when I'm, I'm just out in my front yard outside my base or whatever and somebody just comes strolling by and they just run by and they do the whole, well, we used to be able to do the sword thing and they took that away from us. So now you do the sw switching items, the shield thing if you got one, but you know, just seeing pa people pass by randomly while, while you're just out building your base or whatever is really Get jealous cool. of his diamond beacon? Like, that's what I am. <laughs> or yeah, you can flaunt your, your diamond beacons for everybody to, to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been on servers where people scattered, and that just, that just makes it into a single player world. So if you if in a community where you have just enough room to do your thing and then see all of your friends building and stuff, that's how collaborations start. That's how you know, we built the dam. Like that, that probably wouldn't have happened if we were all a thousand blocks away. So always consider being relatively close, enough room to build, but uh, enough to see your neighbors. Yeah, the last three seasons of Hermitcraft, after the initial area has been built, everyone sort of like rushes off and then slowly like things feel just quieter and, and not as interesting because you're always in this little base far away from everyone else. So this season I think has been the best literally because like as you're building and evolving your base, the bases around you are evolving as well and it's a really great experience because of that. All right, guys, so now we're going to take a few questions live from the audience. So if you guys have a question, Mr. Joe Hills is going to be walking around with the microphone. And here you go, Joe. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here. I see you got a question right here. Can I get your name and where you're from? Uh, my name's Keldon, and I'm from Arizona. And... My question is, if you could have one feature guaranteed to be in the next update of the game based on what you specialize in Minecraft, what would it be and why? Slaps and stairs. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say bluestone. Like, I've already done a video on it, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I think that's definitely something that should be added into the game, even though it's completely ridiculous. So, yeah. Diorite washer. <laughs> Enough said. No, I mean, one of the things I would love most, and anyone who has had conversation with me, I always want a reason to explore more. I want a reason to go out and find new things and only be able to acquire those things when you're out there. Trophy um, blocks. So Trophy blocks. I'm real excited for the 1.11, which is now the exploration update. So can't wait to hear what's in it. I just want something I can farm that's new. <laughs> you know? Just give me something new to farm, you know? <laughs> I think we all know what we want. We want more half slabs and we want more stairs for building and maybe some rare saplings, maybe adventure. We're adventuring. Let's find some rare saplings, some new woods. I mean, we have had the same woods for way too long. We need more building blocks. I'd agree with Scar. More building blocks would be great. But also, we need more inventory management. We need a bigger inventory, easier way to move items around because we're using the same inventory system since like the game launched. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm forever walking back and forth to pick up materials for building. So, yeah, more inventory space. Yeah. Agreed. So, Mojang, if you're listening, you know what to do, all right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, let's see them hands over here. Anybody got a question? Who are you and where are you from? Um, my name is Luca, and uh, do you think seven digits is enough uh, for the spoon counter? <laughs> Hard crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seven digits. Maybe not. Probably not, to be honest with you. I, I mean, I'd have to average, what, like a, a thousand? That would be a lot of spoon moments. But you know what? I, I'm pretty I sure you could do it. <laughs> seven digits <laughs> may not be enough. No, you're probably right. Stand up. Howdy. Where are you from? Uh, my name is Nikolai, and I'm from Brentwood. Uh, and so uh, this one's for Mumbo Jumbo. Thank so you. if you were to pick one block that will never be in Minecraft again, what would it be? All of you can answer that. You know, if there's one block that uh, would never be in Minecraft again, okay, there's, there's one. <laughs> um, that's a really, really good question, actually. I can't really think of many. I mean, Easy. There's, uh, there's some, there's one that begins with D, and then there's an I that follows it, 
but then there's a word before it, coarse dirt. I've heard, <laughs> I, I still want to get rid of that one. I know there's someone on the panel that quite likes that block, but I've been thinking I don't particularly like it very much. So yeah, I thought, I thought that could be the one to go. <laughs> Course dirt is beautiful, and I think it was really funny the other day. We were terraforming some mammal space, and I was like, "Here's the most beautiful block in Minecraft." And I placed coarse dirt, and I placed it really nicely, and had a lot of thought behind it. And he's like, "Dirt? <laughs> is that dirt?" It's like, "No, it's coarse dirt." Oh. You had to look up the crafting recipe, didn't you? Yeah, I, so. I still don't know how to craft that. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. Any questions over here? Here's one. Um, so what happened to the TEA? That's for X. What we, happened to we pranked a bunch of people towards the end of season three, and unfortunately we didn't get much of a response. So we, we kind of hanged the hat up and called it a day, unfortunately, on T. So now, now you've got the log fellas instead. Not quite the same thing, but there you okay. go. So what's your name and where are you from? I'm Gecko, and this isn't really a question, but Faust wanted me to say hi to all you guys, so hey! Symmetra! <laughs> Hello! Oh, <laughs> that was the free one. They'd all better be questions from here on out. That was it. You, you got a question? Hi, I'm Ian, and uh, this is from Mumbo. If you could have one redstone feature added besides bluestone, what would it be? Oh, my word. Um, that's a really, really good question. Uh, is there anyone else on the panel that has one pre-prepared that they would like to mention? Because, to be honest, I actually quite like the idea, actually, come to think about it, I quite like the idea of being able to move storage things. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but see, in Minecraft Pocket Edition in Windows 10, you guys can move chests and dispensers and... Uh, what else can you move? What, what if we them? could push more blocks with Yeah, pistons. basically. Yeah, more and blocks. also the, yeah. the push limit for slime blocks as well. I wouldn't mind that being increased as well. That'd be nice. Um, Fun fact to you, Mumbo, that is actually a line in the code. You can literally change that number if you modify it. One little bit of code, and it will push more blocks. Right, well, once again, Mojang, if you're watching this, okay, you know what to do. <laughs> Contact Exumavoid for, for programming help. Yeah. yeah. Pistons moving chests, though, for sure. Yeah, just to add to that, I would agree with the, the, the pistons moving chests. My only thought on uh, redstone is a lot of people want to add things to make it easier, and I don't. I like the primitive nature of it right now. I don't want things that make auto clocks or anything like that. I want to, I want to keep it in its true form. Okay, go ahead. Yep, I agree. What's your name? What's your name? William, and my question is, what is your least favorite block, and you can't say diorite? <laughs> Second least favorite block. My least favorite block, and I can't say diorite. Birch. Polished diorite. <laughs> well, yeah, po yeah. Should have said polished diorite. <laughs> I, I thought that was a bit, um, yeah, polished diorite is, is pretty bad. <laughs> so wait, so Iska, when you were in my base the other day, you know, there's quite a lot of birch in there, yeah? So when you were saying that you liked my base, yeah, I was just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> Birch planks to me, and this is, I, I have got no one have agreed with me with this, but to me, birch planks are just oak. It's like the table at home, and then you, you, tip, you tip your milk bottle over it, and it, it stains like a little bit white. That's birch planks. I don't like the texture. That's the most specific explanation of a Minecraft block I've ever heard in my life, so congratulations there. This is why Isco was kicked out of the Birch Fellows, unfortunately, buddy. You, you gotta accept the ways of Birch to be a Birch Fella, but that's all right. So for I me, I'd say Bedrock, because I spent ages trying to figure out how to get rid of that stuff so I could get above the nether. And so finally, when somebody figured it out, I was super excited. So I, I hope they still allow us to do that in, in 1.11. <laughs> Impulse, I was gonna say the exact same thing. Imagine having a base suspended above the void in the overworld. That'd be so cool, but you know, Bedrock's in your way. I love all the blocks, but if I had to choose, it would probably be Acacia. I'm sorry, Acacia, but that orange, I, I don't know. Maybe a skull can make it work. I bet he can, but that Acacia, I don't, uh, I don't know what they were thinking. The logs are amazing. They're perfect. You can make them into steel, metals, but the tops need to be covered at all times. You, you guys are rather concerning me because a lot of the blocks you're saying I quite like. The, no. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> Okay, next question. What's your name? What's your question? 
My name is Caden and I'm from San Diego. Um, if you could, if in the next update, what type of biome would you like to add for the explore, exploration update? Tropical. Right. Tropical, tropical biome with uh, palm trees, and I, that's what I've always wanted. I've been talking about that since like 2012. Um, maybe that's where like a lighter wood that's not yellow would be, come in handy. Maybe like a grayish white would be really cool um, for like Victorian houses. So kind of a tropical biome, and uh, I think that would be the, that would be what I would want. Okay. Yeah, for the exploration update, I'm hoping for things like randomly generated dungeons that aren't all the same. Something to add some variety into the game. Mojang, is anyone here? Please? <laughs> I'm honestly so excited for tomorrow, though. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. A lot of you play Minecraft, but I am married to this game. It's very, very, very nervous right now. What are they going to include? Another diorite block would be terrible. So we'll see. Uh, dungeons, though, dungeons, absolutely. I love the exploration uh, mods that are available, and uh, yeah, yeah. One thing that, oh my word, that was, wow, <laughs> okay, that was uh, quite the voice crack just then. As I say, I got a bit of a sore throat at this point in time. Um, but as I was going to say, the uh, one biome that I would quite like to see is like a proper mountainous biome. As in, so we have extreme hills, they're, they're pretty cool, but like, I'd like snowy peaks sort of thing. I don't know if I'm the only one who, who thinks this, but that, I, I just think that would be awesome, just scaling a mountain that's just ridiculously tall. I think that would be hilariously good fun. So. I think Mumbo wants his sky base to overlook a giant mountain right now. So if I could make a new biome, I would like to see like a, a metropolis, I think. Take villages and make them go four or five times bigger and have unique NPCs like guards and stuff like that. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Ready for the next question? Yeah. Here we go. Stand up. Hi, I'm Jack from Michigan. And if you could not use one automatic farm, which would it be? If we could not use one automatic farm, which one would it be? Could not use? Yeah, one that we can't use. Which one wouldn't we use? I'm going to say iron farm just to wind up tango. <laughs> <laughs> Gold farms. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, a string farm. How about a rabbit farm? We probably don't need those. <laughs> I'm Autumn, and it's my birthday. What? And so my question is, why are there so little women on the Hermitcraft server? What was that? I didn't hear that I, well, I couldn't hear that. Can we get the question again? Closer to the microphone, please. Why are there so little women on the Hermitcraft server? Good question. Why are there so no, women? Oh. What? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think... Given the proportion, I gotta be careful how I answer this, huh? <laughs> I think given the proportion of female to male players that are probably there in the community, I think we hit that ratio pretty good. But I don't know, it's a good question. It's not like we... Can I, can I just butt in and say something here? Like when it comes to considering people, you know, gender is never like in question. That's another question. It's really just about who we know, who we like, what are their videos like, are they gonna fit in? You know, gender's never really uh, like a question that gets asked. It's a really good, good one, though. Yeah. yeah that's good. Do you want to do more? Right, here we go. I, I, I go one after. Go. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite uh, Hermitcraft video to make, especially of Zuma? Uh, was it uh, episode 299? <laughs> <laughs> Oddly specific oh. question. I know exactly what he's talking about here. So in episode 299, like forget all the amazing, beautiful farms that we built. I think one of the best moments we've ever had as a group is when we all managed to get stuck in a hole together in water. And that's where the, the, the professional Minecrafter thing came from. Okay, we got somebody right here. What's your name? Stand up. Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm from Toronto. I have a question for Mumbo. Why don't you make a spoon farm? <laughs> <laughs> if Mojang gave me a way to make a spoon farm, I can promise you I would be the first to make one. <laughs> Do you remember season three, Mumbo? I think I did make a spoon farm. Oh, well, 
Thank you. <laughs> Build another one on Hermitcraft Series 4, because clearly I need one. My name is Finn, and I'm from Texas. I wanted to ask all the homers for, um, what is the favorite moment that happened out of the whole Homecraft series? Favorite moment? Favorite moment? Favorite Was that favorite, our favorite moment? Is that what you said? It's a little hard to hear up here, sorry. All right, so a favorite moment on Hermitcraft. I would say when the log fellows were finally taken down. It was, it was a great moment for us. <laughs> um, there are many moments where Rendog just, um, like, you forget that he has ever played the game and he, he just noobs out. So I can't pick one, but, but one with Rendog. I think actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this one. I, I drank a potion of invisibility on his stream, and I put Doc M77 head on, so it was like a floating Doc's head. And I flew around him when he was streaming. And he, he honestly thought that there was a ghost on the server. He, he went crazy, because he, he, he didn't know about potions of invisibility, obviously. He's only played the game for six years. So, you know, you got to give him a break. But he had no idea what was going on, and he freaked out, and that was, that was hilarious. We later hung his horse up in a, in a lead and yeah, it was terrible, but that was funny. All right, so um, I sort of have two right here. So one of my favorite ones is in Hermitcraft Series 3 where I basically decided to build a gigantic Shrek in the town center. Now, for me personally, when I started this, I was like, hey, that'll be like an easy thing to do. Like, it's, it's, it's a massive Shrek, but it won't take too long. And then about 13 hours down the line that day, I was just like, oh my word, why have I decided to do this? But in the end, it ended up looking really, really good. And it stayed, <laughs> I think it stayed for the rest of the Hermitcraft season. It was just there on top of that hill. Uh, but as far as Hermitcraft Series 4 is concerned, it has to be when I decided that I needed some Elytra and I decided to help, get the Hermits to help me out with fighting an Ender Dragon. <laughs> and I managed to die. <laughs> I managed to die multiple times in that episode. I got flung up into the air, I managed to die there. Then they waited with the dragon on no health whatsoever. They waited so that I could come along and deal the last blow. And I just ran straight into the Ender Dragon and died instantly once again. Finally managed to get the Elytra and then I died straight away by trying to climb a ladder and then pressing the space bar and just flying right away to the bottom. <laughs> so basically all of these people had to be my carers for that day because clearly I just, <laughs> I wasn't doing so well. So that was one of my favorite moments. So I don't know that I have a particular, well, I guess I can pick one, but overall my favorite time I server is Thursday nights when we stream with Impulse. We have a ton of fun. Uh, if I had to pick one, though, I would say it's probably when we're trying to catch gas oh, so that we could... <laughs> you just took mine! <laughs> when we were trying to catch... Think quick. <laughs> to be fair... When we were trying to, to catch gas so that we could deliver it on top of False's base, that was probably the best fun I've ever had on the game. I hate that gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just annoys everybody every day, doesn't it? <laughs> to be fair, though, I had to come in that, during that stream and bail you guys out. And load yeah, it. yeah, come, I had to come help us. Well... We've actually done that a few times. It, we, we, uh, I think that's where we initially got our derp persona from that we get on the live streams. Uh, actually, last season, Biffa was having a hard time catching a gas for his Museum of Everything. And uh, we decided that we were going to come to his rescue, being the expert mob catchers that we are. And we decided during the live stream that we were going to go up and, and get ourselves a gas. Well. Needless to say, about 67 gas later, we finally got him one. It took us about, I think, four hours or five hours. It was a really late live stream. I didn't get much sleep that night, I remember that. Uh, but it was a ton of fun. We finally get him a gas, and the next day, I think Biffa managed to just kill it. <laughs> so it didn't last long anyway. But yeah, that was one of my fondest memories too. And again, just hanging out with this guy on the live streams on Thursday nights is a ton of fun, so. I think my best moment was I reached a charity live stream goal uh, for St. Jude and I was flying and I was so excited I just went straight into the ground. I had just bought my uh, dragon head from Cub, which was like 50 or 60 diamonds. It was a lot. It was a lot at the beginning. Now they're cheap, but uh, I was so happy and then all of a sudden they're lost. So I run back over there. The zombie's got it on its head. The zombie kills me because, of course, I didn't bring any gear with me. And then False came to the rescue, packed all my stuff up. But just seeing that, that zombie walking around with that zombie head, all of my armor on, and then 
killing me again, so that's the second death. Um, and then probably when I put the name tag recently in Mumbo's garbage can, not Mumbo, Rendog's garbage can in his uh, gas stations. I was just walk right up there, put the name tag in there, and it turns out it was a garbage can. I thought it was an anvil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You thought a chest was, a, was an anvil? What? Did you think that a chest was an anvil? Well, it... Yeah, that well, was a bad had some, day. They like, signs on it, and, and it was a live stream. We were having fun, and you know how things get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't read the signs. There actually was item signs. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't look. Um, I'm Grace. Um, what's your biggest spoon moment? Um, Mumbo. Spoon. Sorry, one more time, close to the mic. Um, what was your biggest spoon moment for all the hermits? <laughs> Oh boy, um, right, okay, well there's been like a very large number of them. I'd say definitely the Ender Dragon was definitely, that, that was a good number there. there. There was a pretty large one right there. Um, I don't know, yeah, I, I, unfortunately I have to say the Ender Dragon moment, that's, that's probably up there. I'll probably think of a better one later on and then I'll be like, oh, I should have said that one. But for now, yeah, the Ender Dragon was awful. <laughs> I think my biggest spoon moment was when I was at the Charge Creeper farm and I got killed by Python's cousin. It was a named creeper, named charge creeper. Oh, that hurts. I think, uh, we, I think we're, we're going to stop the questions from the audience there because we need to start wrapping it up. Uh, can we have a last question, Joe? One last question. One last question. OK, right here. Hi, my name is Zachary. And I was wondering if anyone likes diorite, because diorite is love, diorite is life. Okay, that, that was seemed to be a personal statement about diorite, not a real question. Real quick, quick, quick question. Uh, what got you into redstone? Real question, good one. Okay, well, I'll start, I'll start off with this one, then this applies to a lot of the other people on the panel as well. So, what got me into redstone? I, I'm assuming that's what you asked. I think that's what you, that's what I heard anyway. Yeah, okay, brilliant. <laughs> um, so, what got me into redstone is... Obviously, I, I'd been playing Minecraft for a little while. You know, I'd, I'd done the standard stuff. I'd built bases, and I'd, I'd done like a few relatively rubbish houses and things like that. And I was like, hey, these pretty builds, they're not really for me. I mean, I've seen some beautiful things on the internet, and clearly that's not my style. So there's this, there's this redstone stuff in the game, and I'm a relatively... Well, I like to think I'm a relatively logical person, even though <laughs> it might not be true. And um, I started messing around with it, and I started, you know, building various different things, messing about with logic gates and things like that. And I just had such a blast just placing in these things and making it all work and trying to solve all of the problems. And I played it for hours and hours and hours and just trying my best to learn all of the mechanics and, and work my way around it. And then uh, Mojang, at the time, were also adding loads of new redstone components. Pistons were being added into the game. and Just loads of new stuff was coming out. And I was just, my mind was blown by all of the opportunities. And I just kept building things and creating contraptions. And then that's when I decided to start making videos of them. That's, that's basically the way that that one went. So that's my story. So I'm a bit of a lazy person, I would say. I, I kind of want everything in my life to be automated for me and just handed to me or done for me. And so when I started playing Minecraft, you know, you, you got to get yourself food, right? And I'm planting wheat and I'm, you know, harvesting it and doing that whole thing. I'm like, this is, no, mm, this is too much manual labor for me. I need to figure out a way to make the game work for me. And so that's when I started doing the research on YouTube and, and saw that there was ways to build machines that could, that could farm for you, right? Get your food for you, get other raw materials so I don't have to go branch mining because, you know, that's, that's manual labor. It's tiring. Uh, so, you know, I was really just wanting to automate everything and just fulfill my, my need to continue to be lazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I just want to kick back, relax, and watch stuff happen while I uh, just, yeah, enjoy it. I was talking about, about this with Beef the other day because, I don't know, a lot of people think that I, I can't do anything with Redstone, which is, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I, I think the reason I got into a little bit of Redstone anyway was because I, I didn't want to sit and, and spend four hours on making a piston door like Beef did the other day, you know. So just learning a little bit, make a piston door. 
I've never got into Redstone. If anybody wants to teach me on the server, you could set up a little school, Redstone lessons. I, I know Wells and I will be your first students. We are, we are there, ready to go. 64 diamonds an hour and you're done. <laughs> Mumbo School of Redstone. Yeah, perfect, sounds brilliant. <laughs> Uh, for myself, I mean, there wasn't, it, to me, Redstone is a totally separate game than, than the rest of Minecraft, and I love them both, but if it wasn't for Redstone, I probably would have stopped playing a long time ago. But uh, it's just, to me, it's, it's amazing how you can start out being so bad and slowly see yourself get better and get better and get better and watch that progress, and it's just, it's very rewarding. So I know that's probably not specifically how I got started, but it's my thoughts. Azuma, you still with us? I know it's like midnight for you, man. I hope I you didn't fall I'm asleep. I'm here, buddy. I'm All awake. Right. I was just thinking, I was rattling my brain. How, how was it I got into Redstone? I remember what it was, really. It was when they added pistons, because before pistons, Redstone was just some fancy wire that turned on and off. But then when they added <laughs> pistons, it was like, it's now going to interact with the world. It's going to change things. And straight away, you know, you start thinking about doors, secret entrances. And yeah, pistons really like turned me onto Redstone. And that was a very long time ago, actually, five years. By the way, I just wanted to say, tomorrow is my five-year anniversary on YouTube. It's pretty cool. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Um, moving on, we, we have to wrap up. This is, this is going so quick. I, and I have, um, we have an, uh, an announcement to make. Yep. That this is the first time we announced this. This is brand new information. So 111, you know, pfft, we also got announcements. You think we're brand new? Um, we are going to very soon, we don't have an exact date, but we are going to very soon, indeed, as some of you have guessed, um, launch a Hermitcraft mod pack. And In there we go. And it's going to be 1.10, so it's brand new, it's, you know, now 1.11, but you know what I mean. And uh, it's, it's going to be amazing. We've been test playing it for a little while. Um, we're going to see some old hermits making a comeback to the modded hermitcraft. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so we wanted to, wanted to let everybody know that and hope that you're hyped about it. We're, we're kind of seeing this happening after Minecon, so it's going to be very, very exciting. Exuma, are you going to be playing modded Minecraft? Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. Looking forward to doing some Good building. Course. Good applause. All those fancy new textures. <laughs> All right. We are going to have to wrap it up now, but I want to thank you guys so much for showing up. This was really, really great. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. You've been a great crowd. A lot of fun. Thank you.